Hi, I'm Nick, and I like comics. Hello, I'm Adam, and I know comics. Welcome to another episode of Imperious Arcs, where we cover story arcs and other comic-related tidbits to better inform and nerdify the world. Today, we'll be continuing our series of episodes to take a look at continuity inconsistencies, or things that simply don't make sense across both the DC and Marvel universes, by looking at the comic book origins of... Wonder Woman. There are too many of them. Wait, are you guys gonna bleep me out every time I cuss? What is that? Like, what the Hey Dorian, welcome to our channel. We are really glad to have you here, but yeah, I will totally bleep you out all the time. Yeah, Nick is no fun like that. I'm tons of fun. All right, all right guys, I guess I'll try to keep it tame for you nerds. So I'm here today to help you guys explain to these lovely, or not so lovely, yeah, I'm looking at you neck bearded people, about all the different comic book origins for the DC female powerhouse Wonder Woman. So Wonder Woman was created by William Moulton Marston a psychologist infamous for inventing the systolic blood pressure measuring apparatus. She was drawn by H.G. Peter with her first appearance in All-Star Comics number 8 in 1941. Marston was hired by two companies that would later form DC Comics to be a consultant. Interestingly, Marston's wife told him that if he was going to help comic companies come up with a character that makes a difference by not using violence but love instead, he better make that hero a woman. Marston believed that it would be very beneficial to create a character with all the strength of Superman plus all the allure of a good and beautiful woman. Because typically in fiction, classic feminine traits were depicted as a weakness, and he wanted to show how being compassionate and peace-loving are actually strengths. Hey Dorian, would you like to talk about Wonder Woman's Golden Age origins? Considering I'm reading off the script, I don't think I have that much of a choice. The Golden Age is an era of American comic books from the late 1930s to the early 1950s. During this time, Diana belonged to a tribe of Amazons who lived on Paradise Island, a place where no men are allowed, but the Amazons have a code that they must always help those in need. A pilot named Steve Trevor crash lands there during World War II and is found by Diana and she nurses him back to health. Hippolyta, Diana's mother and leader of the Amazons, decides to hold a competition to see who is the strongest of her tribe. The winner would be allowed to escort Captain Trevor off the island and join the global conflict and fight for justice. She specifically forbids young Diana from participating, so like any good kid, she revels and fights wearing a mask instead. She wins the competition and reveals her identity, but her mom ends up letting her go anyway, and she grants her with a special outfit, strength increasing bracelets, and the title of Wonder Woman. And after arriving in the US, she conveniently runs into an army nurse that looks just like her, also named Diana, who needed to go to South America to be with her man. So Wonder Woman gives her some money and takes over her life, so she basically purchased her identity. Which is pretty convenient, like as soon as she gets to America, she sees a woman that looks just like her, like, didn't question, like, hey, we could be twins, like, hey, who's your mom, like, who, is Hopalta, like, you know a girl named Hopalta, what's up, what's up, like, no, no, no conversation like that, just, hey, give me your identity, like, I'll give you some money, like, I'm not mad at DC for just making it that simple, but, yeah, it's pretty convenient, not gonna lie. 1956 onward marked the Silver Age, and like with most DC characters, the comic book company decided to revamp origins of existing heroes and give old names to new characters, such as the Flash or Green Lantern. But in the case of Wonder Woman, they decided to make her origin a little more supernatural. Diana is still an Amazon, but now references to World War II have totally been erased. Her strength is no longer due to her lineage or her bracelets like they were in the Golden Age origin. It was revealed during the Silver Age that she was formed from clay by the queen of the Amazons, Hippolyta, and her powers were granted to her by four Olympian deities, beautiful as Aphrodite, wise as Athena, swifter than Hermes, and stronger than Hercules. Interestingly, both the Golden and Silver Age versions give her limited telepathy. Then Crisis on Infinite's Earth happened and wrecked everybody. And by I mean origins and status quo. Wonder Woman's origin was changed once again. She is now the ambassador of the Mascara, not Paradise Island. Like with the Silver Age origin story, she was still made from clay and wished into existence by her mother, and granted powers by the Greek gods Demeter, Artemis, Hestia, Hermes, and Aphrodite. And if you don't know who those Greek gods are and what they are the gods of, look it up yourself because I don't have time for that. I can't do this all day. And also, Nick and Adam, thanks for making me pronounce all those Greek names. It was so much fun. Now in this continuity, Steve Trevor is a much older man and no longer a love interest to Diana. And in the reboot, the creators at DC changed Wonder Woman's personality from a peace-centered heroine to a full-fledged warrior princess with no issues killing. That's my girl. In 2011, DC rebooted their universe again and Wonder Woman's origin was once again greatly changed. She no longer was made from clay like in previous origins and a reason to go to the US had nothing to do with war between mortals or to become an ambassador. In the new continuity, she is the daughter of Zeus and Hippolyta, and her journey to the U.S. is now totally wrapped up in Greek mythology. 
the messenger god Hermes has placed an American woman in Diana's care because she is pregnant with Zeus's child, and there are lots of gods who want this baby dead. Are you confused? It's no wonder people can be so easily discouraged to try and keep up with character continuity in comics. They can't just leave it alone. Every time a comic company feels the need to freshen things up, to bring in new readers or revitalize old ones, they tend to mess up continuity. Unlike Batman or Superman, whose origins have stayed relatively the same, with the reason for being so directly linked to tragedy, Wonder Woman's origins and reason for leaving her home to become a hero just keep changing. Originally grounded in World War II, they've evolved and changed depending on a variety of reasons. Although her character has always been somewhat tied to Greek mythos, DC's New 52 run wrapped her up in it completely, making not only her power set a gift from gods, but also her first bit of plot is all about Zeus's infidelity. As we are heading into DC's rebirth, I wouldn't be surprised if they change the situation regarding her origin again. Then begs the question, what origin story are they going to go with in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice? There have been rumors that she's been around since World War II, which definitely sounds like her Golden Age origin story, but there were also rumors a while ago saying that the movie Amazons are just descendants of the crash-landed Kryptonians from centuries ago, which would be a pretty cool way to introduce Wonder Woman to the DC Extended Universe, but we won't know for sure until we watch it. Don't forget that DC is currently publishing The Legends of Wonder Woman, a nine-issue story that deals with young Diana growing up in Themyscira. What you would think would help us answer the question of what her current origin story really entails, but I'm pretty sure that that is considered outside of major continuity, much like Grant Morrison's Earth-1 Wonder Woman story. I think this is just another one of those confusing comic book topics that isn't clear-cut. I'm definitely the type of guy who likes to hash out continuity questions and specifics, but Wonder Woman's origin and the source of her powers has changed so much, it kind of just leaves me exhausted. Absolutely. DC's rebirth is coming, and I look forward to seeing what they will keep and uh, what they will change with Wonder Woman. Maybe everything from the New 52 will stay the same for her? Only Jeff Johns really knows. That guy hasn't given us the vaguest idea of what will actually happen yet. So Dorian, do you have any closing remarks? Why oh, yes, yes I do. If you like asking these type of questions, make sure to check out my channel. I love talking about different superheroes and villains, and I make some pretty funny reaction videos, so who wouldn't want to check that out? Also, thanks so much for having me on the show, Nick and Adam. You guys are the best. And if you guys watching at home want to see us team up again, head over to my channel and watch us do my top 10 Wonder Woman fact video that will blow your minds. Thanks for this great crossover team up, man. What kind of comic book show would this be if we didn't have team ups? So, let us know by liking this video and commenting that you enjoy our team ups. Do you have more explanations on Wonder Woman? Feel free to let us know. She definitely has a very interesting publication history that would be fun to cover sometime. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And Dorian's as well. How else will you get reminders that we put out awesome new videos if you don't subscribe? And before you see us again, we'll probably have watched Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice, at least once. Maybe at least twice. Or thrice, depending on how expensive the IMAX really is. Or if you're really cool and you buy one of those $100 tickets that AMC is offering and you can see the movie unlimited times as long as it's released in the theater. Did you hear about that? No, but we don't even have an AMC here. I know, it's stupid. Dumb.